If I told you that you and your family had to leave your home in five minutes from right now and survive with no help for 72 hours, could you do it? In this video, I'll walk you through the critical items you'd wanna have ready to ensure you and your family's safety. So let's jump in. Thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. I'll share more about them a little later. If you're new to this channel, my name is Chris, and on this channel, we discuss emergency preparedness. I live in Southern California, and for us, the threat of fire season and earthquakes, it forces us to confront the reality that when a disaster happens, staying in our home may not always be an option, and mobility is key. I'm a father, and I have three children, and they range in age from 12, 10, and 3, and I want to make sure we're all taken care of in the event of an emergency. It is a bit challenging doing videos on these bags as everyone has different needs and you'll face different challenges based on where you live. Also, these bags are part of a bigger evacuation system. I'll detail in a future video, but the primary goal of these bags is simply keep you alive for 72 hours if you had to evacuate your home quickly. I'll also provide a link to all the items we discuss at cityprepping.com forward slash bug out bag and in the description section below. So don't feel like you have to write everything down as I discuss it all. So let's jump in. Before we jump into going in through the details of the bag, let me make a few quick notes. First, uh, have the items that you want to have on hand ready next to the bag. A pair of boots. These are just some hiking boots that I have. They're uh, just gonna be good for rugged conditions. I've got a baseball cap and I've got a fleece jacket. And again, I keep these items close by the bag so that if we have to run out the door, I'm not quickly or you know having to look for these things, I can quickly move. The next item is when it comes to security, personal security. Uh, due to restrictions on YouTube, you know what I'm saying here, I can't say that out loud, but I do keep this safely secure by my bug out bags. And if you, for whatever reason, live in an area where you know firearms are not available, there's other options. You can actually get on Amazon like pepper spray. This one is an item that I keep in my wife's bag. This is a flashlight and it also doubles over if you uh, click here as a taser. So these are items that I keep in her bag. And uh, again, just some options for you in case you say, well, I can't have firearms. Having gotten that out of the way, let me go ahead and jump into the bag itself. The first thing that I wanna point out is weight. You wanna keep your bug out bag at around 15% of your overall body weight, no more than 20%. I was able to get this down to 15%. I was able to cut a lot of items out and, you know, if we have a situation where we need more water, again, I live in a desert, I've got additional bladders in here that I can add more water. Of course, water adds a lot of weight to a bag and I would have to get rid of some items, but I do have options. I wanna just say that up front. All right, before we open up the bag, let's start looking at different items that we have on the outside. The first one is a cat tourniquet. I purposely put this on the outside so that if you know there's somebody in our group that has uh, you know a lot of bleeding happening, I can quickly take this off with these two tabs, I can take this off and we are in action and we can use that. The second item is this right here. This is a solar blanket. It's from a company called Off Grid Trek. And this is gonna be a really useful option. Again, where I live, I've got nothing but sun. And so being able to charge all my electronic devices practically weighs nothing. And I believe it's, I wanna say 21 watts um, that it produces. You can uh, connect a few different devices through a USB plug in here. It's got these uh, two little tabs you can pull off. And so I keep this right here ready, uh, readily available if I need it. So let me go ahead and slide the bag open. And what I'll do is, and by the way, this bag, this is a VanQuest I, uh, Ibex 35. And my wife, I have an Ibex 24. It's a little smaller than this one, but it's a similar same bag. And I'll go ahead and open this up here at the bottom. Okay, so now that we've unzipped this, let me kind of open up and show you what I've got going here. Uh, at the very top, and this is by purpose, I've got this medical kit. I'm gonna slide this back out of the way so we can take a look at these items. Um, obviously, you've got a big designation med, and this is again on top, so that if there's anything important we need to get out, again, apart from the tourniquet doing its job, there are a few additional items uh, that are very important. I'm not gonna go through every little detail, but I'll just give you a quick synapse, uh, quick overview. I've got some gloves, I've got sunscreen. We live in an area where there's a lot of sun. Uh, an ace bandage, got a lot of different types of antiseptic, different types of wipe, BZK, any itch cream, uh, neosporin, that kind of stuff. Got, you know, whenever we have any type of issue with bug bites, we take care of that. 
Modium AD, we've got different types of painkillers. We've got additional gauzes, and I'll bring this up a little closer here in frame. Got some sealant, uh, you know, kind of some glue if you have any bleeding. Got quick clot, Israeli bandage, and again, just some additional Pepto-Bismol to deal with any upset stomachs. Uh, my med kits are always a work in progress, and again, you can customize yours how do you, uh, to how you see fit, but I just want to make sure that everybody's taken care of if there's any type of bleeding or cuts. Now, one thing I forgot to mention before I opened up the bag, and I'll just slide this uh, back in frame really quick, is these two pockets on the top. I'll open up one here. I always do this on purpose. I keep my flashlights on the top. And this is just a simple little flashlight picked up on Amazon. It has both a red light and a white light. Um, and by the way, I'll know, you'll point, I'll point this out on all my electronics. They're all USB chargeable. And I'll talk about that uh, a little more. Or actually, I do want to point out with the solar panel, the solar blanket that I just showed you, I can charge this. And I've got a hand crank that I can also charge those. This one is just a simple light that I can clip on the back of the bag if we're walking down the highway. Again, just to make sure that people don't, you know, uh, accidentally hit us. And this is a glow stick. Glow sticks have a lot of applications for emergency preparedness, apart from just the lighting itself. And I always keep those in all of our bags. Um, now on the top, I've got a rain poncho. This is just a simple rain poncho, really small, lightweight. I don't really get a lot of rain where I live. So if uh, we're out and I'm not seeing, you know, rain the forecast, I might dump that for weight issues. And then I always keep cash on hand. Uh, I've got tens. I need to break this down into smaller, you know, fives and ones, but you always want to have small units of money on hand. Um, so, you know, again, if there's electricity, is the electricity is down, you want to make sure that you can be able to buy things at the store. Now, opening this up, um, this is a food ration uh, setup. This is an SOSC thing that's going to last for years. Uh, you know, this is not something I would want to have to eat every day, but this is kind of a last day item. I do have a couple of MREs that will serve, you know, as a meal for each day. And I'll talk about a few other items here, but make sure you think about calories. Our, my setup, I think is roughly around 2000 calories a day, which is, you know, if we're gonna be moving around a lot, that's not a lot, but at least it keeps me going. It's enough for three days. And again, another MRE. And on top of here, and again, I'll pull these out when we're talking about the subject of food, I've got a couple of other small type of energy bars. I think these have 410 calories each. And I've got just a simple, you know, spoon kind of a fork if there's ever a situation where I need that. And this is, I think, a titanium, so it's pretty lightweight. Okay, so let me bring this hopefully into frame so you can see this. I'm gonna pull this off the side of the bag here. I've got this on the inside of all my bags. This is a just kind of a breakdown by color of what the different items are. And I use this as a guide. You'll see, and again, as I'm pulling each one of these items out, they follow this color designation. The first bag, and I'll pull this out here, is the blue, you'll see the blue tab. And again, that's designated for water. Now, these little bags, again, these are from VanQuest. You can pick these up on their website. I'll provide a link to those. And I'll show you what I've got ha uh, here in the water bag. The first thing is these uh, Zip Fizz. These are just, you know, energy drinks. I don't carry coffee because I don't want to have to heat up water, which means I need, an, you know, a small little stove or something. You'll notice everything in here doesn't require stoves. Everything's just basically water. And I did it on purpose to keep the weight down. So this is just, you know, a form of energy. Here is a mini Sawyer. Mini Sawyer's hands down are my favorite water filter setup. You can, you know, uh, if you pre-filter out the water, you can filter the remaining water, uh, or the water rather, after pre-filtering it up to 100,000 gallons. You'll also notice I've got some iodine tablets. If I think the water is a little sketch after filtering it or before I filter it, I've got those in there. Um, a few other items in here. This is uh, a, what's called a hydration multiplier. And I carry about four of these in my kit. And I've also got one in another area I'll show in a second. Now, earlier I said, uh, you know, I would want an extra water bladder just in case if I came across an area where you know there's water that we found and we know we may not have water for a while i can also fill this up in addition to and while we're on the subject of water i've got this uh, i think two liter water uh, bladder here with the you know the hose so i can drink out of that here, here at the bottom in this area and also you'll notice that i've got uh, this as well just a standard i believe uh, one liter water uh, bottle I've also got the water multiplier inside. Before I continue on in this particular setup, you'll also notice I've got these electrolytes. Where I live, again, it gets hot, it gets sunny. We don't have a lot of water, so if we get into a situation uh, where we need those, we'll have them. 
And again, here's one of the uh, water multipliers. So that's really the water setup. And again, I've got the bladder down here. Now let me move on to the next subject, or rather the next item is this right here. Again, we've got yellow and white. Yellow on the designation system that they've got here, it stands for fire, and then white is for sanitation or hygiene rather. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'll open this up and show you what I have. Okay, so for fire, we've got a just kind of a big lighter inside of here. And you'll also notice that I've wrapped this up with uh, Gorilla Tape. I just, again, if I need the tape, I can peel this off quickly and it's on there. Got some matches, some wet fire fire starter. You'll notice I've got a piece of aluminum foil if I need to lay it on the ground and get the fire start in that if for whatever reason, you know, I want to contain it on that. And I've also got a fire rod here. So uh, these are just kind of a redundant system, you know, to make sure that if we need fire, we can get it going. And again, going back to the bag here, we've got the white, which is hygiene. And for the hygiene, I've got toilet paper and I've got wipes. Um, just again, you know, uh, just want to make sure I'm, I'm comfortable if we're in a situation where we're out and about. I, again, I prefer to have wipes instead of just toilet paper. Toothbrush and toothpaste. And then let me pull out some of these other items. These are soap strips, so you can actually, little individual strips, take them, wet them, and then soap your hands up, and then chapstick. And then I keep a garbage bag. Garbage bags have a lot of different applications apart from just being a garbage bag. Thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. If you're concerned about home safety or have been putting off dealing with getting a home security system installed, they make it easy to get this set up. They've got various sensors ranging from HD cameras, water sensors, smoke alarms, and my personal favorite, smart door locks. I chose to work with Simply Safe after moving a year ago as I wanted a system I could install without having outside contractors in my house. It didn't require me needing to drill holes, not locked into a contract and could easily connect to my existing home Wi-Fi setup. It was easy to set up the initial system and I'm still extending my existing home-based system, smart door locks and motion sensors adding additional cameras and carbon monoxide alarms. If the alarm is stripped, the system will call the police on my behalf. If you'd like to check out their systems, I'll provide a link in the description section below. And again, with this color designation, we've got uh, a yellow and we've got, I believe, a coyote. So, Yellow is comms and navigation, and that's down here. And then the coyote is shelter. Whoops, and I just dropped it. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this up and take a look and see what we've got in here. All right, I'll tell you what, let me just move this bag out of frame so I can put this here. Okay, so for shelter, I've got, uh, well, actually, let me pull this out of the bottom here. Shelter. I've got a rain fly, and hopefully you can see this here at the bottom. This is just a standard rain fly. You can obviously get a tarp. It, you know, it doesn't matter, whatever. Just have some option to provide shelter. Again, where I live, we don't get a lot of rain, but if we're out in the sun and we need something to cover us, we've got that. So let me move back over here to this discussion about shelter. Um, this is a sole bivy. So if you notice in my setup, I don't carry a sleeping bag. Where I live, does it get terribly cold? In the wintertime, I might change that out and add something a little more substantial, but this is a simple sleep bivy. At nighttime, we'd have that covered. Okay, now the next one is uh, communications, which I believe was yellow. And you'll also notice a little green tab. Whenever you see green tabs on my bag, and I forgot to point this out a second ago, that's usually a designation, or that is a de designation for electrical devices. So once I go through every you know couple of months, six months, and I check up on the electronics, I know where those are at. And again, let's look at the yellow, uh, which is for comms. And I'll go ahead and show you really quickly what I've got in here. I've got a few things. I'll tell you what, I'll open this up and show you each one of these. And by the way, you'll notice everything's in Ziploc bags. Um, I just use Ziploc bags for organization. It keeps things in place. And then obviously it keeps water off of it if it gets wet, uh, just protects the items. This is a Garmin uh, in navigation. I believe it's called InReach Mini. Uh, the reason I have this apart from the obvious navigation application is you can actually send messages via text to a satellite and it will transmit that information over to the individual. To me, this is really important in earthquake prone area where power may be off and communications are down. Uh, I've got a really small reflection mirror here. So if we need to uh, send out a signal or rather signal airplane or something that's nearby, we can do that. This is a hand crank radio. You'll notice here it has solar, which to be honest, I don't think that really does anything. Uh, it's more of a novelty. Got the light here on the front. So this is just a backup system to our flashlight. 
in addition to communication, obviously. And you also notice that I've got these different types of connector uh, connections for my uh, you know, iPhone. You've got the three different types of connections. I think USB-C, and I forget what the name of the other one is, off this little adapter. So all of these are very important for communication, keeping us informed. Here is a ham radio, which also can act as a two-way radio with the other uh, radios that we have in our bags. And a write and rain uh, text pad, oops, along with the pen here. And the reason I have this is in the event, you know, we have to go somewhere, leave a message, we go somewhere else, we can use these and tape it on there with the tape I've got. And this gives us the ability to leave messages uh, as we go along. And the last item is a compass. Now you'll notice I didn't have a map in here. Honestly, the area that I live in, we know it pretty well. If we need a map, it's really more for state level. We're not, you know, we're not hiking across the state. But again, if you want a regional map, it's not a bad idea. We just know our area pretty well. Okay, so let me pull the bag over and go along here. And there's one thing that just fell out at the beginning when I was talking. Let me come over here and grab this. This is a, and I have this on the top of the bag when I opened it, it fell out, sorry about that. But inside, I've got pictures of all of our family and I've got other pieces of paper in here that has contact information. It's got documents that are very important that are scanned, uh, like our social security cards. It's got a lot of information, who to call, the different protocols, where to go, if we get split up, who to call, what to do. So that way we all are on the same page. We all know what to do, who's, you know, where all the phone numbers are at. And this is all in here. So I would encourage you, you know, print this up, scan all these documents. Again, I'll put a link to all that information uh, in the description section below, but definitely have a plan because if you get split up and you know you get lost and your kids get separated, having that information for them will be important. So let me go into the side pockets really quick. Hopefully this is in frame. I'll open this up. Now, again, the goal is in an emergency, we can quickly grab the bag. It has everything we need. I don't need to hunt down clothes. Um, I keep you know a t-shirt in here. I keep some underwear and a, a, a nightcap. Uh, because it does get cool where we're at. And let me pull out what else. I've got a pair of work gloves. And at the very bottom, I've got a large bandana. Bandanas serve a lot of applications, whether it's a splint, you can pre-filter water, shade, etc. And again, the work gloves, I went with a leather uh, pair of work gloves if we have to, you know, uh, deal with, you know, whatever it is, I just want something to protect my hands. Now, if we head out, I mean, I'm gonna put this t-shirt on, so it's gonna open up this pocket. and. As I fill the water bladder up on the inside, I can take items out and move it over here. So I definitely took into account those different space, uh, space issues. Now flipping the bag over on this side, you'll notice I've got um, a option to, uh, I've gotten this tightened down, but this will open up and I can expand it out and stick my water, uh, you know, little water bottle there. So again, we're opening up space as I need it in, on the inside. All right, so inside of here, uh, opening this up, I've got a pair of pants and these just standard pants. I can also zip them off if I want to make them shorts. And I think that's pretty much it on the uh, on this side. Let me see if I can get this in the frame. This black tab, again, following the designation system is tools. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and we'll take a look at what we've got here. I've got a multi-tool. This is just a Leatherman Wave. And I've got paracord and I've got 100 feet. I might cut this down into half. I don't know. I've been on the fence about that. But you'll notice I don't have a fixed blade knife. I don't have a saw. I did have those in there, but I took them out. I used to camp for years. I never, ever <laughs> used a fixed blade knife. I always had just a simple multi-tool that always did the trick. And when it comes to a saw, I don't know. I, again, I'm trying to keep the weight down. Um, again, I always camp, never use a saw ever in all my years. But uh, again, if you, wanna, if you want those items in your kit, obviously adjust accordingly. <laughs> In this part of the video, what I'll do is I'll do a run through of my children or one of their bug out bags. Now, this is unique to my 12 year old. I've got a 10 year old and a three year old. My 10 and 12 year old, what I'm putting in this bag, I'm gonna put in both. My three year old, obviously, it's gonna be way different. It's probably just gonna be some clothes and food, but these have some items that my 10 and 12 year old will know how to use. Before I jump into this, let me point out one thing though. Um, if you do have small kids, and, or maybe, you know, they're not using strollers anymore. It wouldn't be a bad idea to just pick up even a small umbrella stroller. I just picked up this one today. Our kids have kind of grown out of, uh, well, my youngest still uses this stroller, but hey, you know, kids, it's gonna be a little harder for them to move around if you're having to go long distance, especially small kids. And one of the other advantages too is you can actually carry items in that, you know, different bags or water. So it has utility purposes if you're in a situation where you're having to walk 
both for carrying people and items. Okay, now having said that, let's go ahead and dive in and I'll go through a few compartments. There's not a whole lot. It's a pretty white, lightweight bag, I don't know, 12, 15 pounds maybe. Uh, that's enough for my uh, kids, you know, my two older kids to be able to handle easily. Okay, so in this pocket, and by the way, most of this is not laid out in any specific order, just whatever fits. But I've got uh, all our family photos. I've got a bunch of other documents in here. I've got all the contact information, who to call, where to go, what to do. You know, just a lot of different scenarios. I document it in these pages. And I've also got all of our animals' um, vaccine shots and all their information. My oldest son takes care of our pets and our family. And so I've got all this in his bag so that he has all that information. Um, I trust him with that. Okay, so opening up this pocket, we've got a rain poncho, uh, it's a child size. I've got a deck of cards and some other games in here. Just something to keep their mind entertained. Again, you know, if we're sitting around doing nothing. Got toilet paper and wipes. Got a two-way radio and a whistle, and then the batteries are off to the side. Um, I will be doing videos soon on the channel about communication, something I haven't really covered a lot, but at least we all have those in our bags. This is your hygiene kit hand sanitizer, lip balm. Uh, these are little uh, soap strips and then toothbrush and toothpaste. So hygiene's you know, gonna be a big thing if uh, you're out. And let's see, I think that's everything in here. Uh, let me go into the main compartment and open this up. Okay, so here we've got sunscreen. Again, where I live, got a lot of sun. Don't wanna get sunburn. Got a text notepad here and a pen if they need to write notes, if they get split or whatever, you know, just having some way to communicate, uh, I think is important. Yeah. For our kids and for all the bags for that matter, we carry these glow sticks. Now my oldest, they have gone through scouting programs, so they understand the basics of a compass. And I've got a headlamp here. This is rechargeable, I've got that attached. And uh, it's by a company called, I think, what is this called, Hybrid Light. It's got a little switch here so you can you know, protect it from being turned on so it doesn't get bumped. And I also like the fact with all my lights, I have red light options. Uh, I think that's important to me, but flip that, it keeps it from going on. Then a small med kit and very small for that matter, just band-aids and a few wipes. Nothing really that extreme. The adults have the more advanced kits. Okay, so moving on, um, you'll notice we've got a water bottle and Inside of these, I have those uh, hydration multipliers that I talked about earlier. Again, it's just really hot where we live and need to have that. A large bandana of some sort, a lot of different purposes for that. A uh, sleep bivy and a garbage bag. Um, so the adults, they carry the shelters. The kids have their own little small bivvies. And then clothes, got pants, shirts, underwear, uh, socks. And again, because in a situation, if you're having to run out, uh, even at good times, it's hard to get my kids to get all their clothes on before we go out the door, much less in a stressful situation. And then a uh, sweater, because again, when we live, it gets cool at night. And okay, so the inside, the rest here, and I'll pull these out, is food. Now, uh, I'll explain kind of, you know, the reason behind this. These individual lunch kits, these, you know, have a pretty good amount of calories. There's a lot of food inside. This could get them by each one of these for a day. Uh, or at least as part of their meals. I've got a food ration. This would probably be maybe a third day. By then we're still out. Um, probably, you know, not the most enjoyable to eat, but it's gonna be food. And these bars, I believe, are made by the same manufacturer. These are high calorie, um, different types of emergency bars. These can last five years. Got a lot of different snacks, some fruit strips uh, for the morning, having, you know, like go-go squeezes. I know our kids enjoy these. Just some simple fruits and vegetables, get them going in the morning. And then trail mix throughout the day, they can use these as snack. And then uh, raisins. Now, I do realize a lot of these have expiration dates and you need to you know, probably check your kits at a minimum every six months just to make sure nothing's expired. But that's the setup that I have. Again, not necessarily, you know, Typical, well, obviously not meals that we eat as a family, but hey, it's enough the calories to get us by for three days and make sure everybody's taken care of. Um, and then I've got a water bladder. I'm sorry, let me get this in frame here. I'm sorry if I'm jumping around on you. But I've got a water bladder here in the back, and again, we can fill that up. And I believe this backpack may or may not, I don't think it has hip straps, but some of the other bags that we have have hip, uh, hip straps. So that's it. 
Again, not overly advanced, but it's enough to take care of them. And one thing I did is I mentioned pets when I talked about the vaccination records. I'm not gonna go into pets in this video, but I will in a future video, I'll do a standalone talking about what you should consider when uh, having to bug out in an emergency with pets. So that's our kids. And again, we use this kind of same in the other bag. And then for our three-year-old, it's a much more pared down, just clothes and food, but that's it. Hopefully this video gave you enough information to help you determine what the framework is that you wanna to use to build these bags for your family. Again, everybody's gonna have different needs. My needs are different, again, based on my region. I live in a desert, we don't have a lot of water. So I have to factor that in. If you were to live in an environment where you do have a lot of water, for example, you would probably have different options and setups than I do. But again, factor in what's important to you and build accordingly. If you do have any questions, any feedback, please feel free to post that in the comment section below. I typically try to respond to questions within the first hour of releasing the video. And you can also contact me directly if you do have additional questions by going to cityprepping.com and just clicking on the contact button. As always, stay safe out there.